preventable. Our fifth story in the countdown tonight, new evidence that that portrayal is simply not true. A portion of the 9-11 Commission report revealed today shows that between April and September of 2001, leaders of the Federal Aviation Administration received 52 intelligence reports specifically mentioning Osama bin Laden or Al-Qaeda or both, and that the FAA even warned airports of the prospect of suicide hijackings ending in, quote, spectacular explosions, and told them that if one were attempted, quote, a domestic hijacking would probably be more preferable. The previously unreleased declassified section of the 9-11 Commission report is now out. Intelligence that indicated a real and growing threat leading up to 9-11, its authors concluded, did not stimulate significant increases in security procedures. Even though almost half of the 105 FAA intelligence briefings between April and September 10th, 2001, mentioned bin Laden and or Al-Qaeda. Even though five of those briefings discussed their training or capability to conduct hijackings. Even though the FAA had distributed a CD-ROM presentation to airlines and airports that cited the possibility of a suicide hijacking. Even though aviation officials conducted classified briefings for security officials at 19 American airports to specifically warn about the bin Laden threat, even though on July 17, 2001, in proposing to make airport screening more stringent, the FAA cited the presence of terrorist cells in the U.S. and, quote, their interest in targeting the transportation sector. In the FAA's defense, none of the briefings it received in 2001 specifically suggested that such and such a group was planning such and such a series of hijackings on such and such a Tuesday morning but the names and details that would fill those blanks in so horribly were all in the FAA's hands for at least the five months before the attacks. We don't really know the full facts of what happened on 9-11, why World Trade Center building number seven collapsed even though it wasn't hit by a plane, why the hole in the Pentagon was so small. In a moment, you'll meet the man behind the ads and investigator who says there are answers to all those questions. But first, here's Deborah Farrick with a look at the ads and the allegations. The two ads suggest a government conspiracy and cover-up, raising questions like, why did a building two blocks from the World Trade Center towers seem to implode? It was not hit by aircraft, it had no significant fire, and no explanation for its collapse has been given. Another ad asking why plane parts at the Pentagon seem to have disappeared. The photos show no cabin, no engines, and no tail. The 9-11 Commission questioned eyewitnesses to both events. A spokesman saying the official report, which makes no mention of any government conspiracy, speaks for itself. But the ads, paid for by California millionaire James Walters, are taking on a who killed JFK like quality. And they're fueling efforts by groups like 9-11 Citizens Watch, asking New York's Attorney General to launch a criminal investigation into what they believe is a government cover-up. I think there's clear evidence for convening grand juries and uh, examining the body of evidence, the bodies of evidence that the independent community of researchers and others and family members have brought forward. Even those who dismiss the more outlandish conspiracy theories say the 9-11 report is incomplete. Many people in the rest of the country probably think there's closure on this, is there? Not really, because there's still a lot of unanswered questions. Glenn Corbett is helping investigate the collapse of the towers for the National Institute of Standards and Technology. He says the ads go too far. The ads seem to implicate uh, bombs and, and explosives and the use of missiles uh, on both the Pentagon and the, and the World Trade Center complex. And the evidence really just doesn't support that uh, from what we've found so far. Not only did Walters shell out $3 million for the TV ads, which got a lot of airtime before the presidential elections, he also bought newspaper ads and helped bankroll a Zogby poll, the results of which found 66% of those questioned want the 9-11 investigation reopened. Deborah Thayrick, CNN, New York. Joining me from Los Angeles, the man behind the advertising campaign, Jimmy Walter, and in Miami, lawyer and investigator, Gerald Posner, author of Why America Slept, The Reasons Behind Our Failure to Prevent 9-11. appreciate both of you being on the program. Thank you for having me. Jimmy, you. let me start off with two things. I mean, you're talking about the Pentagon and, this, and the Tower Number 7. Let's talk with the Pentagon. If Flight 77 didn't crash into the Pentagon, as you claim it didn't, then what did and what happened to the 64 passengers who have died? Well, uh, I don't know, and I am not the person to ask because I don't have the best evidence. 
I do know that in 1962, the United States Military Joint Chiefs of Staff commissioned a program called Operation Northwoods in which they plan to have military personnel dress up as civilians, get on a civilian aircraft, land it secretly, take off a drone, shoot the drone down, and blame it on Cuba as a ch pretext to invade Cuba. So you think this was a they, pretext to, what, invade Afghanistan and Iraq? I'm just saying that the United States military has done it before. To ask me what happened is absurd. I don't have the evidence. The Pentagon refuses to release the tapes that would clearly show what hit the Pentagon. Why, if they're not trying to cover something up, won't they release the tapes that would prove it one way or All the right, other? All right, Gerald, let me bring you in here. Um, you know, what a lot of the, the, the conspiracy theorists on this say is that, you know, there was a small hole uh, and that there was no large hole from the wings of the plane and therefore that hit the Pentagon. Therefore, there was no plane that hit the Pentagon. Your explanation. You know, Anderson, I mean, everything about this, it, it, they use evidence, they misconstrue evidence. They say, well, the hole was very small. And they show you a picture from the top, an aerial satellite photograph of the top of the Pentagon. It looks like a small hole. They don't show you the front of the uh, building, which is absolutely devastated through three different layers when that plane hits. And the plane does exactly what you expect it to do. It's coming down. It hits the ground at 250 miles an hour. It's 100 tons of debris. It's hitting the Pentagon, which has these 6 and 12 inch steel girders. It largely disintegrates. But you asked the key question. What about the 64 victims on the plane? Body parts were found there at the Pentagon. They were comprised through dental records and x-rays. Do we expect that somehow the government fired a missile into the Pentagon, then took the 64 bodies that dropped down in a plane somewhere in the United States, nobody saw this happen, dropped the body parts in the Pentagon, so somehow we should feel that we should invade Afghanistan? Let me assure you, after the World Trade Center towers were hit, we did not need the Pentagon as another target to have the Jim American people feel they should go after Afghanistan. Jimmy, Jimmy, your other major assertion is that the World Trade Center building number seven was detonated from within. Now, and in your commercial, you say that there's no, never been any public explanation given for why the building collapsed. What is your theory or belief on that? 